Okay, so we are going through what to put on the cheat sheet for home finance, right? And this one's on the formula sheet that I just went through. Okay, so other stuff. You should know that the minimum down payment in Canada is 5%. Minimum down payment in Canada is 5%. Can you abbreviate on your cheat sheet? Absolutely. Oh. Abbreviate it however you want, right? In Canada, less than 20% means that you need mortgage insurance. What is mortgage insurance? Yeah, well, it's if you don't pay the insur if you don't pay the mortgage, the bank is basically insurance. You know how like you have insurance on your car if you, you know, right and runs into you? MPI pays to get the car fixed, right? Mortgage insurance is the bank wants you to have insurance that if you don't pay your mortgage, they can still get paid. But who pays the mortgage insurance? Not the bank. You. You're paying the bank's insurance. So you want to aim for a down payment that's at least 20%. That is hard to do in this day and age, isn't it? It is very, very hard to do. Mm -hmm. One more reason to do that. Um, um, start with a smaller home and work your way up. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Anyways, i got to be careful here that I make sure I get through it. Okay, here's a word you need to know, the principal. Not Mr. Cassian. I probably made that joke earlier. It is the starting loan amount. And then after that, you make payments, right? Probably not. Some things you can remember. I'm trying to cover everything. Yes, you're going to have to make a decision. Do I need this? So if the home is worth $100,000 and you put a 5%, $5,000 down payment, your principal is $95,000. And you make payments after that. Front and back. And just as a way of sort of an estimate, that's true. And I, know I cut some stuff out too, but you might want to add stuff. It's up to you. The, yeah, but the more you put on there, the more you have uh, that's your advantage. You make payments, could be weekly payments. Could be monthly, could be bi-weekly. Bi-weekly is actually mathematically the best way to do it because you get 26 payments in a year. Okay? Monthly, it's not the best. But it's kind of the way we calculate. In your own world, world, in your own life, I highly recommend bi-weekly. Why is what's the difference between bi-weekly and weekly? Well, weekly would be every would be every week, two times a year, like every Friday or something like that. Bi-weekly would be like every second Friday. Seven monthly is 24. Seven monthly is 24. Yeah, like the first and fifth. Year. It kind of depends on how you're paid. Years ago, I well, I still am. I'm paid twice a month, so it's better to sort of set up your payments according to your pay schedule. Are you paid every month? I no, I get paid twice a month, 15th and the 30th. Do you get paid twice a month, Mrs. P? Probably, eh? I, I think do. I think the whole division is paid that way. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so how do you find the monthly payment steps? How do you find the monthly payment? Here are the steps. You take the principal, or sorry, you take the house cost and you subtract the down payment. Some of people, and I've been doing some of this in my grade nine, some of them are wanting to add the down payment. Oh, this is the what? To find the monthly payment amount, right? So you take the house cost, whatever the house, whatever you're paying for the house, and you subtract the down payment. Who does that down payment go to? To the bank. They take it off what you owe. Well, the bank's in, the, their business is loaning money. That's their business. Just like Dean Cooley's business is selling cars, fixing cars. Just an example. Just an example. Okay, remember then, the next step is to take the principal and you must divide by a thousand. You must divide by a thousand. And then you multiply by the table value. They will give you the table. You guys have the big giant table. You can't bring it, but if you're trying to, you can. Uh, looks like this. Remember this? 
They, I believe, you know what it's Yes, they will. They, they will give this to you in the question. Mm -hmm. Probably not worth it. I think so. Not on the formula sheet. No. Just, just, just the question. in the question. Just, yeah. couple of reminders about this. Because I can almost guarantee you they're going to ask, what is the total amount paid? They almost always ask that, don't they? I think so. That's the yeah. big question. That's the big question. They always want you to know that. So the total amount paid is your monthly payment, your $600 a month or whatever it is. Multiply by 12, if that's what it is, monthly. But then you got to multiply by the years to pay. Generally, the years to pay quite often is... 25. It might be 20 or 15. 10. Could be 10. I think I got mine paid off in 18. I wrote it on top of it. Yeah. I was pretty diligent for quite a while. Monthly payment times 12 times 25. And that 25 that years to pay is known as the amortization period. Fancy word for how long it takes to pay. Amortization period. Again, you're right, nice and tiny, right? You can always redo as well, right? That's probably a good idea. Certainly remember it if you do. Everybody good? Okay, I'll pause here. I guess we're going to do the tennis. Okay, what else we got here after total paid? Probably the interest. Yeah, probably. Total interest. They always ask this question too, don't they? They do. Total interest. How much does it cost you extra to borrow? The total interest is the total amount that you paid minus the principal. It's the bank's profit is what it is. Right? The bank's profit. How much does the bank profit off you? Looks like that's it for this page. There's plenty more. Big, big unit. Some study tips. Make sure you get enough sleep. Don't plan to stay up till 3 in the morning the night before the exam. Get some oh, breakfast yeah. in the morning. Have a good breakfast. That's right. Get up. Maybe maybe a little exercise that morning. Go oh, for a yeah. five-minute walk or something like that, right? Or lean before you Not go. six Red Bulls. Bad oh. idea. Mm. Thanks for the idea. Mm. Six Red Bulls. Not, no. Right? Oh, you don't need. Six. Right? And if you drink six Red Bulls in your life, that's five too many. You can you could probably be like a provider of Red Bulls, just your natural energy. Four is good enough. Four Red Bull one day is good enough. Yeah. Okay, so remember that's on the on the formula sheet, and uh, the GDSR must be less than thirty two percent to get the loan. You might want to jot that down somewhere. And reminder that the formula uses months, right? So, if their property tax is $2,000 a year, what do you have to do? Put it to months by dividing by 12, right? Right? If the heating cost is given per year, you got to make it into months. Okay, does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. Well, remember, this is given on the permit sheet, right? Yeah. All, of those permit All that's given on the permit sheet, so don't waste space on it.
Savior? No, but I was definitely the last guy back to the bridge. Which I, I, pretty rough shape. Okay, there are sales tax on things. Remember, GST is 5%. Now, if I'm not mistaken, that is also listed on the formula sheet. Uh, yes, it is. Yeah. Okay, so, oh, in fact, it's on the back page of the formula sheet. So it shows the 8% and the 5%, so you don't need that. Right? GST is on everything except property tax and land transfer tax. And there's no GST on... in. Tenant insurance as well, as well. But if that's the last thing you forget, if you get that one wrong, that's not a big deal. Okay, don't forget PST is 8% all sort of optional costs. Things like inspection, you get a home inspector. Maybe you're buying new curtains or new carpet, that kind of stuff. You should probably review that list. It's far too lengthy for me to go through in here. There you go. Try and focus. It's important stuff here. I don't. I want to see everyone graduate except for Bowie, because that's next year. Uh, yeah, next year it's Bowie. Graduate. Okay. How can you pay less on your mortgage? You can live in the bush, in the woods. build your own beaver dam, I don't know, live in a tent. I like yeah, but for most of us, ways to pay less on your mortgage include things like increasing your down payment. Right? The more you pay down, the less you're going to pay in interest. What, you write down whatever you need think you do, right? You would, if you think you'd know that, yeah, leave it. Sorry. It lowers the principal, right, by increasing your down payment. Lane looks like he's got a cheat sheet already started. You can increase your monthly payment. If the bank says, Bodie, your monthly payment is $750, you can say, you know what, I'm going to pay $800. They won't let you do that. Depends on the terms of your um, of your bank loan. Some will not allow that. They will only let you extra pay extra like once a year or twice a year. Okay, you can negotiate that. But I encourage you to always consider um, paying extra if you can. What I did was we took our um, our income tax refunds and used it every year. You can negotiate a lower interest. You can say, hey, Mr. Banker, I don't like that rate. I would like a lower rate, please. They might laugh at you, but they might say, okay. That would go also for car loans, right? You're buying a car from Twin Motors and they offer you 3.5%. You might say, well, you know what? I think I'll go for a walk, unless it goes down to 3.2%. You might be able to offer it. If you want Bodhi, I'm going through this, so you, you make decisions based on what you need. Okay. You can make lump sum payments, like I said, the income tax refund. I've seen this question a few times, right, Ms. Kozlowski? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Th this question is usually a one or two marker. Give some ways you can reduce your overall mortgage costs. Yeah. Here's another tip for the exam. Always, always, always show your work. And even if you don't know what to do, and write something down. Right? Something, because we will look for marks. And for goodness sake, don't leave a multiple choice question unanswered. Because I've seen that as well. Unanswered. Like, answer every multiple choice question. People do that. Hard to believe. You did it, Lane? Yeah. So, so it's like a, the test is for the exam, it's like a big book and it has like an answer for a yeah, it's usually one question per page. And the multiple choice, in the, in the old applied days, they would make you fill in a bubble sheet, but it looks like you're just filling, just circling in here. Yeah. And the multiple choice sort of looks like it's um, spread throughout. We can only answer questions like, 
what is this, or how do I do this? No, hang on, let me rephrase that. We can all, the answer to every question is do your best. I can read the question for you. You say, can you, I don't quite understand this, can you read it to me? I can read it, but I can't help you in any way. Okay, for example, here's the question. All I can do is say Adele is buying a house for $275,000. She makes a $55,000 down payment. I can emphasize certain words, but you have to know what I mean. I can't help. Okay? Okay. Now, the affordability chart, we didn't spend a lot of time with this. Am I right? We, we sort of glossed over this. So I don't, and I'm not too, too worried, um, but you might want to have a look at this. Um, you take the gross monthly income, you multiply by 0.32. This is sort of the reverse of what, what we did, right? Uh, subtract the monthly property taxes and so on. So I'm not too worried about this, but it probably wouldn't hurt if you've covered everything else. Have a look at this. Okay. Obviously, you're not going to copy that whole chart down. You might remember doing this. I think we did some of this. Didn't we, Mr. Kozlowski? Okay. okay. So you might want to look at that. Right, um, and it helps you figure out what's the uh, you're multiplying. Am I right? No, you're dividing. Sorry, you're dividing. You're taking the monthly payment. Okay, like if your monthly payment is say 800, and the rate is 6%, you're going to take that 800 and divide by 0 0.00640, and it gives you how much of a um, mortgage you can afford. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that because I don't. I'm not. I'm going to take my chance. Okay. You should know about insurance rates, home insurance. A reminder as well for those of you moving away next year. If you're in school, you're covered under your parents' insurance. Likely, check your have your parents check with your insurance agent. If you're not going to school and you move away, like if you just moved to Brandon to work, you need tenant insurance. Okay. Otherwise, you're not covered for anything. There are, um, sorry, that's home insurance though. Um, why does it say fixed? That, that should be this should not be insurance. No, that should be mortgage. This should be mortgage rates. Yeah, this should not be insurance. This should be mortgage rates. Okay, so a mortgage rate, if it's fixed, it means it doesn't change. If it's variable, it means that it does change. Right? What are some advantages to it not changing? It's in the name. It doesn't change. You know what you're going to pay every month. Right? Variable, whether it's in the variance is that, it might go down. But something might go down, also might go up. However, long term statistics have told me that variable rates are the way to go from what I've heard. Doesn't make a lot of difference to me now. But. And mortgage rates are a huge driver of how much you actually end up paying. So always try to get the absolute lowest rate you can. Um, property tax. Pays for local services like garbage, your teacher and EA wages. Roads, sewer, general improvement in the town, making things look nice, potholes, what have you, right? We all have to pay our share of property tax. And remember that the general idea is that the more expensive your home, probably the more you can afford to pay in property tax. One way to keep your property taxes low is don't buy a big home, big fancy home. Okay, so remember, this this is definitely something that I can see being on the exam, because to figuring out the, the property tax. So you have to take the assessed value of your home. On a side note, the assessed value of your home is different than the value, the market value, what the real estate agent tells you it's worth. It's the assessed value. Times the portion percent. Am I am I right, Ms. Kozlowski? It's usually forty-five percent. Usually, yeah. 
I don't know why it's a silly setup. If, 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 if it isn't that, they'll give you, they'll give you, they'll give you exactly. the enclosure. Yeah. Yeah. But I think most municipals in Manitoba would go with 45%. And that's called your portioned assessment. It's the amount you have to pay tax on. Okay, so if it's like an $80,000 assessment, multiply that by, remember 0.45, right, 45%, 0.45, okay, to get what's called your portion assessment. Yeah, yeah, otherwise you're paying way too much of property tax. Then you use what's called the mill rate to find the amount. Do you remember me using that word, mill rate? Mill is a short for a thousand. It's French. Generally, the mill rate is somewhere between like about, I don't know, maybe 10 and maybe 40. Looks like if it's 40, that means you pay $40 in tax for every $1,000 of portion assessment. Okay, so the steps are take the portion assessment, divide by 1,000, and multiply by the mill rate. And we did questions like that. Okay, what? How much would you expect someone to be paying in uh, property tax? Like, what? It, what should be your values that you're getting? Sixty bucks a year? Ten thousand dollars? What? What would be a range of values for property taxes? Do you think? This scares me. I'm hoping you guys are just being shy. I'm gonna guess like low end about eight hundred bucks. High end. Oh man. Five thousand, maybe. Yeah, like yeah. you know, it is a lot. Yeah, five thousand would be considered middle class high. Some multi-million dollar mansions you might see in Winnipeg or in Calgary or Vancouver. Yeah, you'd be paying way more. Around here, good old Manitoba, five thousand is probably max. So if you get somewhere between those values, check and see if you've done the steps right. Right? Like you're not going to be paying in Manitoba ninety thousand dollars in property tax. Not on a house. Maybe on a large commercial building. Okay. Then there we talked about what we call local improvement. Maybe they're putting a sidewalk in in front of your home, like I had a couple years ago. Maybe they're redoing the boulevard or redoing street lights or something. Okay, so you take what's called your frontage, which is how wide your lot is in feet, and you multiply by the amount. I have yet to see this on a property tax bill in my lifetime. Have you ever seen this frontage? Yeah. I've, no, I'm an accountant. Yeah, but even still. Yeah. Yeah, they wouldn't do. Yeah. I, I don't know. I think this is a holdover from years ago. And yeah. But you know, they are now big enough because they found uh, what lead in the water right. everybody is, is really yep. changing out but there. again is it is it based on frontage I don't know um, or is it a spread throughout the tax base like I had my sidewalk done and I didn't pay an extra cent really maybe maybe they do it and and everybody taxes but but I mean so I don't I don't think this local improvement is really a thing. Anyway, so this pays for things like sidewalks, streetlights, etc. You don't need to write all that down, right? If the question is what are they paying property tax, you have to add it all up and then subtract any credits. There are credits that you can subtract. what's the total you pay in property tax, right? So you, you total means add everything up, right? That's what total means. I hope 
the marine. You guys got some rain the other day, I think, right? I was away, but mm -hmm. last night it felt like there was some rain. There was a little bit. Yeah, so not much. It was, it was light. But no, considerable more to go. How many more pages have I got? Four, three more. Okay, one of the questions. Do you have to put that? Might be, you guys, again, it's your choice, your decision, what you want to put down. One of the questions might be, what are some advantages to buying? Or what are some extra buying costs, right? So when you're talking about buying a home, you got to pay the mortgage, you got to pay the down payment, you got to pay the appraisal, you got to pay for the survey. Not, uh, what's his name? The bald guy that does Family Feud. Not that Steve kind of, Harvey? Right? Steve Harvey, yeah, not that kind of survey. Says? Yeah, in our day it was Richard Dawson. For years. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can't go on the bank uh, Property tax, lawyer's fees, decorating, utility hookup, insurance, oh, the list goes on and on and on, right? You probably don't need to write them all down. They might ask you for two or three extra costs involved in buying. What are some costs involved in renting? Well, the rent, insurance, utility hookup. Is there anything else, Mrs. Kozlowski, you think of? Not a whole lot, right? Yeah. Yeah. What are some advantages to buying a home? I haven't put this here, but let's talk about it quickly now. What are some advantages? Here, I'll pause. I didn't start writing this down, but what are some advantages to buying a home as opposed to renting? Make it your own. You can knock out a wall. You can put in new windows. You can build a deck. You can add an addition. You can do whatever you want. Renovation. Pardon me? You own it. You own it. You're, you are gaining what's called equity, right? If you sell the home, you get some money back. It's an investment. What are some disadvantages to buying? Not your own. Not your, no, disadvantage. Well, disadvantages to buy. Long time to pay off. Long time to pay off. Costs are high. No, disadvantage to buy. You're responsible for everything. The furnace goes, you're got to pay. You're the, you're the guy. You're the gal. No, it's still maintenance. What are some advantages to renting? Generally, it doesn't cost as much. Don't have to worry about things like Yeah. As long as it's not something that you've damaged, right? You don't, you're not, you're not no yard work, depending on what you're renting, I guess. Yeah. Um, right? It's harder, like, one of them used to be it was easier to move. I'm finding that that's not so much true anymore because they insist on that full year lease, yes, right? they do. So you're not, you're having to find a new renter as opposed to having to find someone to buy it. So it's very similar. Yeah, yeah. You might have to do some. You might have to do some renovations before you can sell it, right? Clean it up, have a garage sale. Okay. So on your home insurance, just a reminder. This is more reminders than anything. There are different areas you have to use the table and to be sure that you check the deductible. You get that table. You will get this table if that question appears. Yes. Okay. So just a reminder that there's different areas: Metro Winnipeg, Area Two, Area Three, Area Four. The, the rules were like how far away you were from a fire hydrant or whatever. From what I saw in the book, it pretty much explains exactly which area. Which area. Not a provincial exam booklet right there? This is an old one, yes. Okay? Now, this is an old, old table because nobody has a home worth $50,000. Okay? But if you need, if your home is worth more than 200000 what do you do, right? So let's say it's in Dauphin, area two. You want standard insurance and your home is two fifty. So you're going to take the 519 and for additional amount per thousand coverage. So if your house is 250,000, you subtract the 200,000, you need $50,000 more coverage. So you take the 50,000 divide by 1,000, which is 50, and you multiply by 275, and then you add that to the 519. Do you remember doing that? Okay. Again, very important, always show your work. 
If you show your work, then the marker can say, oh, I see what they're trying to do here. They screwed this up. They, maybe you, you picked 571 instead of 519. Oh, I see what they did. I'll give them a half mark off. If all you do is write down a number, we go, meh, I don't know, X, zero. Okay? Don't be afraid to show your work. Ever. Um, well, this one here has 40. So we have 40 pages? Not necessarily. But this has 40 pages, actually. Okay? Mostly, yes. Yeah. So there's only maybe eight or nine that are short, uh, multiple trips. Okay, we did land transfer tax. Remember, use the table, which they'll give you. Be sure to remember to pay only the percent of that range of the value. So in other words, the first 30,000 is free, right? So if the land, maybe you're just buying a lot for 80,000, you have to subtract the 30,000, Josh, and you pay... 0.5% on that next 50. Remember that 0.5 is 0 0.005. You will get this table. Josh, eyes open. He's sleeping. Wake him up, right? Okay? If you're not sure what's going on here, make sure you ask Mrs. P or myself. Okay? I'm not, you can't write all that down. But just a reminder, you, you have to sort of separate, right? You pay 0.5% on the next 60,000. Anywhere between 90 and 150, you pay 1%. Much like income tax, by the way. Oh, and that is all. That's all I got.